Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Five rules of body weight and body fat tracking. How do you know if you're losing fat and hopefully gaining muscle or losing fat and not actually losing muscle at the same time? Let's get into it. Rule one, the scale, that is your bathroom weight scale, your strength, your strength for repetitions, specifically in your actual training, and the mirror. You know, you can technically look at yourself in the mirror anywhere. I like to strip almost naked in the shopping mall. Shopping mall security tells me that's impolite at best and at worst a felony, but it's all a misunderstanding. I tell them while they club me half to death. But in any case, if you are losing weight, and at the same time, your strength is roughly equivalent for reps or even going up a little bit. And in the mirror, you are looking notably leaner. You're losing fat and probably not losing muscle. On the other hand, if the scale weight is meh, about the same, your strength is about the same or even going up. And the mirror, you look about the same. There's probably not much magic fat loss going on underneath. So some people will get on a diet, assume it's the right amount of calories for fat loss. Three or four weeks go by, the scale doesn't really change. They look kind of the same. Strength is going up a little bit. They say, well, yes, my body's just adjusting. Like, is it though? So you want to see weight loss on the scale. You want to see your strength stable or going up a little bit or falling maybe by just a smidge. And you want to see yourself every two weeks at least. And the mirror here is kind of an outdated reference. Just take a video of yourself or pictures of yourself with your phone while in the mirror and send them to me. Here is my DM. I'm just kidding. I mean, you know, if you want to send me some pictures, I love feet. Is that the thing, Scott the Video Guy? Feet pics? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Maybe it's something that can't be explained. Guys, if you ever see my feet, you'll never forget. They're terrible. In any case, get some vids or pics of yourself every two weeks. And the great thing about that is you don't have to rely on memory. You can just swipe, 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 left and right, take that. And you can see clear visual differences, then you're good to go. If that's really happening, that means you are losing fat and not much muscle. If the scale is going down and you're looking very different, but strength for reps is going down, I just mean in your regular lifts. You like pressing 225 pounds for eight, the month later in your fat loss diet, you're pressing 235 pounds for, well, four or five. Ugh. Strength is definitely down a bit. Then we can say there is a chance you're not losing muscle. It's just fatigue and fiber type changes, which do happen. But there's a decent chance you're losing some muscle, which is okay because you're losing fat as well. Muscle is not that hard to rebuild once you've had it before, but not ideal. And kind of the worst outcome is, especially the bathroom scale isn't moving. And especially you're kind of looking similar if after about a month that's the case, that's not good. And it kind of doesn't matter what any other body composition device tells you. The scale, strength for reps in your normal lifts, and the mirror can pretty much tell you almost everything that you need to know about your progression. Number two rule, the BIA scale. I don't want to call out any company names here. Libel lawsuit. There's a particular BIA company that it's quite popular. And uh, I call it the double dildo device because it looks like double dildo sometimes. You just hold on to both sides and wiggle it around. Think, well, this could be a lot of fun with friends, special kinds of friends. But in any case, you grab it. Sometimes you also step on some uh, plates with your feet. And what it does is it sends an electrical current around your whole body. It measures how much current it uh, basically pushes out into you. Obviously, it knows how much current it's pushing out. It measures the amount coming back in around in that loop. And on average, less current comes back around if you have more body fat because body fat tends to be an insulator and it has more resistance. Uh, on the other hand, if you are quite lean, then you will get most of the current to come back or more of it. And that's how they run the equations off that. The problem is you could think, gee whiz, you know, I don't want to say that's a shot in the dark, but it's one measurement to infer an entire body's worth of tissue 
Could it go wrong? And the answer is yes. It turns out the BIA scale, the one you just stand on and it tells you your body fat or the double dildo device, is absolutely awful. And a part of my PhD work was to learn how to validate and confirm and use all of the body composition devices I'm talking about in this presentation. And the BIA scale, I actually used it for a significant amount of time when I was in my PhD, and I was losing pounds and pounds of fat at the time. I was looking completely different. I was losing tons of weight, but it just gave the same body fat every week. And I used it every day of every week, and it would go up and down by a fraction of a percent here and there, and it just stayed the same. And I was like, oh my God. But don't take my word for it. If you actually look up the research on BAA, the reliability that is on any given day, can it tell you roughly the same numbers, is decent. Although it's not that great because if your hydration level is different, the reliability goes south even then. But the accuracy, like is it really showing you the right body fat number roughly, is absolute garbage. It's off by charitably, very charitably, 4%. 4%, man, that's a whole diet's worth of fat loss. If a 200 pound person loses 4%, that's eight pounds of fat. It, you can lose eight pounds of fat and the scale says you lost nothing. Or you can lose no fat at all and the scale says you lost eight pounds of fat. Fuck out of here. I just wouldn't even bother with that device. I'm sorry. In early 2023, when we're filming this video, maybe the updates and upgrades can make the device better. I'll certainly be keen on looking at that research, but for now, it's just not anything to invest your time into. Why do I say this? Why am I so passionate about it? Regularly, I have folks that I consult in various ways say, hey man, like, um, you know, my my uh, BIA results came in and here's what they are. What do you think? And, and people get hung up on them. They're like, well, this is good, right? Or, oh, this is no good. Folks, it's neither of them. It's nothing. It's just all smoke and mirrors. So don't hang your hat on it at all. That's my best advice. Rule number three, more of me talking smack. Skinfold caliper tests are mostly useless. Now, I used to administer skinfold caliper tests to Division I athletes as a part of my PhD work. They are decent for large groups of people in taking averages. So if you have an entire volleyball team and you want to see how over the course of a four-month season, did they gain roughly some lean tissue or uh, did they change in body fat, you can get a decent estimate off of like you know, 15 people or something averaged together. But for one individual, the error rate is still too high. And here's another problem. In order to do skin folds properly, I was trained for quite some time to do very specific, even how you pinch. You gotta pinch like this. This is wrong and it'll give you wrong results. You gotta pinch your forefinger and thumb together vertically. And that's the only way to do it. And there's a bunch of other considerations. The sites are super specific to actually get a number that represents anything like your body fat, right? That's it. And I got that education. Even then, I would have been such a poor practitioner of it because the test inherently is limited. But the personal trainer that's offering you a free skin fold test at your gym, who's never passed an anthropometry cert or anything, he's just doing it laser. Actually, it's very easy. If you, if you see anyone grabbing a skin fold like this, they're doing it wrong. And the numbers are all wacky. Here's the bigger problem. Even if you do the test right, even if it's a trained person that's doing it, what they're actually measuring literally is how much body fat you have under the skin by pinching it and putting a caliper in and seeing how much body fat is there. If it's enough body fat to detect with a skin fold, you're probably going to see it on your body anyway. Just pinch your rolls every now and again, and if they're looking a little thin, then well, that's what it is. So it doesn't really give you much more information unless you lose a lot of fat, then it becomes clear the skin fold becomes valid. But if you're losing a lot of fat, you can already tell from 50 other ways, including just looking at yourself. Here's the real deal. If you lose six months worth of fat, skin fold starts to be useful. But useful for what? It doesn't tell you how much body fat you have because the equations are so off. It can tell you changes really well. If you have the same administrator, same person administering the test, and it changes by two millimeters, three, four millimeters on average for the whole thing, then yeah, yeah, absolutely, you're losing fat. But you're going to have someone skin fold you every week? You really can't skin fold yourself very accurately that a lot of stuff goes on in there that, that it goes wrong. There's ways to have a skin fold test where you just do it on your own abdominal region by yourself. Again, the precision of that is really low. The validity of that is really low. And it's just not worth your time. 
skin folding is this super cheap, easy way to do things. And it does work for large groups, but again, it can't really reliably tell you what your body fat percentage is. It can tell you the changes are occurring, but then you need to do it every week or something like that and by a trained practitioner. Already, most of the use cases of skin full tests are gone, so I would not encourage its use. Again, scale, strength, and mirror, beat that every single time. Point number four, rule number four. A DEXA is a smart thing to get, dual X-ray emission absorptiometry. You shoot X-rays through your body, yes, all the way through, and you turn into Superman. You begin to fight crime, but when you're done fighting crime and saving the world, they give you a printout to show you how dense your bones are, how much of you is muscle, how much is fat, there are some internal equations they used to estimate. It's not like the machine inherently has to give correct answers. It could be miscalibrated and all this other stuff. But generally, the companies that make these machines and make the software do a very good job. So the DEXA is very accurate. Now, accurate for what, you may ask? Accurate enough to tell you every one or two years, are you gaining an average of muscle and losing an average of fat in your fitness journey? Absolutely. Accurate enough to do once every three months? Gee whiz, here's the problem. You drink more water, you eat more food, your muscles are glycogen depleted or they're less glycogen depleted. Even that has so much of a shift that the DEXA could not miss it, but blur the lines. So what ends up happening is the DEXA can generally tell you if in three months or even in a one month, if you gain some muscle or lost some fat, but the sum is just some. The precision is not low enough to tell you, well, it's three pounds. I mean, it will tell you three pounds, but if you look up the direct research on the error rate, then that entire three pounds is swallowed up. So the DEXA ends up being this pretty expensive thing. It's like a hundred bucks to get a DEXA. You can technically safely do a DEXA once a day and be okay on the borderline. Uh, definitely you can do it once a week, but like, why would you get a DEXA once a week? So it can tell you something that is not precise enough for it to tell you that, right? It's like if, uh, Scott, the video guy, can I see this mouse on the, if I take this mouse and I'm like, okay, here we go. The mouse is right here, right? Okay, I'm gonna move the mouse. All right. How much did the mouse move? I don't know, man, I can't see that clearly. That's the DEXA every week. It's just not, it's just, the error rate is where you're sitting, who knows if the mouse moved. I don't even know if I moved the mouse to be honest. So, but once every one year, maybe even, even every six months, but definitely once every year, or two years, getting a DEXA can tell you a lot. The bonus points, especially if you are a Caucasian female, uh, you have a, a slightly elevated risk of long-term bone loss, osteopenia, which can lead to osteoporosis, which is super bad when your bones get so brittle. You, a lot of really normal activities can put you at risk of bone fracture, which is really terrible. And at that age, and it is super difficult to recover in that condition. So what you can do is use the DEXA to track your fitness, but also track your bone density. And uh, that's uh, really super cool. Bonus uh, point shit you never needed to know, but well, here he goes. Do you guys see how my face and head is shaped? This thing here, all weird. It turns out I'm like four and a half standard deviations away from the mean or some shit, maybe even higher on a DEXA. So like my bone density is like one in every 10,000 people has denser bones than me, which is like cool and all, but kind of useless. I mean, I don't know. If I got hit by a car, I could just bounce off and be like, ow. And they're like, what the hell? You're not dead? I'm just still a dumb meathead, I guess. And they're like, where were you walking? I'm like, nowhere. And I mean that philosophically. I don't know where I'm going. In any case, Dex is sweet, but don't do it every month or something like that. You're not going to get out of it what you think or what you want, rather. Lastly, you can get some reliable, let's say DEXA once a year, uh, you can get some reliable body fat numbers. What you do with them, percents, right? Oh my God, I'm 15%, I'm 17%, I'm 25%. My last rule here is don't use them as the pinnacles of what you're shooting for. Don't use them as value judgments on yourself. Is that good or bad? It's just body fat. And it's just muscle mass. Focus on two things, or if you focus on two things rather, I don't want to get too prescriptive, you will have a better time. One is the look. Like, do you like your look? Like if someone, uh, you know, actually, so recently I got a Dexed on and I was like 252 pounds at 9.2% body fat or something, which is fucking sweet, word up, right? But like, at the time, I was kind of holding a lot of water from special sports supplements. And I didn't think I looked that great. 
like if I brought, drop water in a week, I'd look pretty dope. And I ended up doing that later. But, you know, the look was like, meh. And so because there's not really a number you can show me that it's like, I want the look. And if in my most shredded, it, I actually had somehow 12% body fat, I don't care, right? It's the look you're going for. So focus on your look, not the number. If you get a DEXA result that says whatever, forget about it for a sec. How do you look? Are you lean yet? Are you sharp yet? Do you want to look like this? Do you want to be leaner or is this good enough? Do you want to be thicker? Choose for yourself. The look is important. And secondly, and very importantly, the feel. How do you feel? Do you feel comfortable in clothes? Do you feel comfortable going out in public? Do you feel comfortable pulling off your shirt at the beach and flexing on a motherfucker here and there? That's the whole point of getting in shape, remember? That's why you started those 1950s magazines where the straw man kicks sand in the face of the nerd. I want to see a redux of that shot where the nerd is like a concealed carry guy and he's like, oh, what was that? And the guy's like, <laughs> my mistake, let me pick the sand up off of your body and beg for my life. Although Scott's video guy isn't pulling a gun out in public on someone who's not in a life imminent, it was very bad. Gun enthusiasts, I'm 1000% about that second amendment. I take back everything I said. Would be sweet to pull that strap out on a motherfucker. I'm strapped up at the beach. Uh, Scott, the video guy, you know a lot about guns. If I have a regular, let's say, uh, nine milli Beretta, is that a real gun? I heard it on a 50 cent record. Yeah. Can I walk into the water with it and walk out and the gun still functions? Ooh, probably. Probably, it but not good water. for salt water, not good. Ooh. I know like a, like a military grade M4 is in and out of the water, it works, right? How the hell am I supposed to go to the beach and in the ocean if I can't get strapped all the time? Anyway, focus on how you feel. And that doesn't mean just how you feel psychologically with your shirt off or whatever. That also means how do you feel moving around? You know, if you're feeling sluggish and blah and the body fat thing says you're leaner than ever, you're like, all right, I guess I got to get leaner. But if the body fat thing says whatever device you use, let's say a DEXA says you're a little on the thicker side, but you're having, you know, you're mass gaining, you know, who should I cut? But you're having the training of your life and you feel like a, like a fucking fright train. Keep going. Fuck it. Because you can always burn that fat later. As long as you're not super sloppy, you're good to go. So remember the number is just a number and it is contextual and it's important, but it's not everything. How you look and how you feel at the end of the day is why you're doing this because the reason you are watching this channel and this video probably is because you want to lose some fat and gain some muscle and because you want to look and feel different. It's not because you want some kind of number. So don't get too caught up on the number. Get caught up a little bit on the look and the feel. Go out there, have some fun. And uh, if you see a clown, squint at him. What are you up to? Trust clowns. I'll see you guys next time.